Hey guys, Shanti Phillips here. Welcome to brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping room today. They're going to go out and see the stuff that came out. Also going to look at the different versions of Deadpool that came out. I know there's a bunch of different ones. Someone's saying something about a red case version at Target. And I think they've got one, a steelbook at Best Buy. I don't know if Walmart has anything specific. Not sure I'm going to pick that one up or not. I did really like that movie. But it's one of those ones I know, though, is going to be a lot cheaper down the line. Usually Fox titles end up being like... In a couple months, they usually start out like 22, 20, and then end up being 10 and like really cheap. It's, I've usually noticed that usually with Fox releases, they end up really going down in price a number of months down, you know, down the line. Also, going to see where else we go today. Also, going to have a couple reviews at the end of this video, so stay tuned for those. And I'll have my main, you know, DVD Blu-ray update up this weekend as well. So be on the lookout for that this Saturday. So anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. Here's the Deadpool stand here. And see it says in here, collectible packaging, only a target. Yeah, see in the red case, someone said. And it seems like, yeah, all their ones are in the red cases here. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Their releases, like I said, are in the red case. And it comes in here with exclusive postcards. I think that's their main difference in here. But it's cool they put this in a red case. Like, I think like the red case is only at Target, as far as I know. I don't think there's anything else different, though, besides that one. It seems like, yeah, all their cases are... Oh, no, there are some blue, so they have some of the blue ones. So when these red cases ones that say on the front, only a Target are gone, then they won't have any more of this one. So that's interesting. So if you are coming to Target and want the exclusive one, definitely check just to make sure, you know, you get this one that says only a Target on the front. That's the one that has, you know, the postcards inside of this one as well. It's always funny too how they put some of them, you know, in this in the actual section in these uh, plastic things, like these, you know, so people don't steal them. I always think that's kind of funny how, like, then they, all the ones in the front though were not in these things. So I never understand like the system for that. But like I said, you know, the other thing today was the boy. But this is the big thing, and I think I'm probably going to get one of these red case ones. I think I think I am going to actually end up picking this up. Yeah, so I ended up picking that up in there. I ended up getting, you know, the one, the red case. I know there's a Steelbook one, I think, at Best Buy as well. We're going to look at that one as well, see what that has in it. I don't think it has any different features on it. Of course, you know, I got some more PV2, the chocolate one as well. Into the quality resale thrift store we go. So we'll take a look in here at the DVDs and see if there's anything out of print. Last time I was in here, I found some pretty decent stuff, some really decent out of print titles. Uh, the one sold for like $70, something like that, an Anchor Bay one. But you, you know, pretty much what I do is when I look for the out of print stuff, I look for the stuff that's kind of uncommon, that you don't see a lot. Like there's certain things that you know you see all the time, everywhere, like something like the Watchmen. You know that that's not going to be something that's going to have a value. But like some stuff like Oh God Book 2, I looked this up already. Doesn't have any value but something like this you don't see this kind of thing all the time so that's pretty much what I do and I always look on the spines of things for Anchor Bay titles because Anchor Bay always is the ones that is a good chance can be really valuable like there's certain ones though like these ones that are the newer Anchor Bay titles the newer release ones those ones are not very valuable but like the older ones I always like you know the older ones from Anchor Bay though are the ones that you always want to look them up some of them can be huge amounts of money really depends on what it is and like I said you always want to try and look for the least common kind of ones you don't see all the time like stuff like like Mike 2 you know that's something that's like really widely released and you know pretty common release and the thing that you know it's probably not gonna have a whole lot of value same with something like lost in translation stuff like that that's pretty much what I'm doing because people always say what am I looking for and I also basically uh, when I find something that I want to look up I go on Amazon and look for, since it's an open title, I would look for, you know, what it sells for. Use is like the, the lowest price people are selling it for a use. Or also look on Amazon and see what the lowest, um, you know, I mean, look also look on eBay for the lowest used price. Something like, for like example, like career opportunities, which is sealed. If I saw this, um, I would look up, you know, this what they're selling it for, like a new copy on Amazon or eBay. And that's pretty much what I'm, what I'm doing and what I'm looking for. Because people always ask. Like, what is the stuff I'm looking for when I'm doing it? One of the things you always do find in here, too, are these odd bootlegs. There's always so many of these mixed in here, these strange bootlegs. Of this, you can tell right away this is a, a Kill Bill bootleg. I think this, I don't even know where this one is from, but it's always weird to see so many of these bootlegs in here. They have more of these 99 cents discs things in here, like these loose discs. It's like a mix in here of like CDs and DVDs and stuff in here. Broke Down Palace. I always, I always kind of like that movie, Broke Down Palace. 
I haven't seen that movie in a really long time though. But Wicker Park, like a lot of real common ones, but it would be funny to find like one of those ones I'm always looking for in these loose discs. But then I was like, oh, then you don't have the case and the artwork or anything. So it's kind of weird. A whole lot of KISS CDs in here. I like that. Someone like got rid of all the KISS. And they have this thing in here. I've never seen this like mascot. It's called like Chocolate Charlie. It says Chocolate ch Chocolate Chip Charlie. I think it's from like 19... No, it doesn't have the date on it. But it's from the International House of Pancakes. Isn't that weird? I don't know if it says on the date on the back of there when this is from anywhere on here or not now, i don't see anything so i don't know when this is from this mascot it looks like it's years ago i didn't even ever know that there was like a mascot for the international house of pancakes isn't that weird like i guess that's that's very strange the mascot uh chocolate chips charlie it's very weird and they have like an autograph here from mash i don't know who it's signed from i can't tell who that says but that's like a really random thing like it's, and it says like the guy's name it says happy holidays that's a really odd thing to see in here. Yeah, so I got out of that store, and you know, last time they had a whole bunch of stuff, but it hasn't changed too much. It's one of those places like that you go to like once a month or so and see if they change it out, because it really depends on you know what kind of stuff comes in or what people have sold or from estate sales. They said that all that kind of stuff, but like I said, nothing really in there. But now I'm gonna head into the mall to go into FYE and see if they've changed anything out in there or if they got anything new. Into FYE we go. We'll see if anything changed out in here. And this is like the newest part where they put the newer things. But we'll see if there's anything different. But this is the thing without a print in here. They know like this, you know, $29.99 for this movie, Raw Justice, some Pamela Anderson movie. I've never heard of this one in my life, but they know though when they price stuff in here. They price them way higher when they are out of print. And see in here they have these Friday the 13th ones. These ones are actually out of print now. So if you see these, I think these actually are worth like $40 now. These ones because that box set recently went out of print. So if you guys see these in the stores, I've got to check out the exact prices. But I know these ones are kind of harder to get now. These specific like later ones as far as I can remember. And they have this one in here. If you guys haven't seen this one, this is actually a really cool, weird, strange movie called Inbred. I, I don't know. For some reason, I really like this movie. It's really, really odd. One, of, Probably one of the oddest movies I've seen. But that's really not a bad one in here. But it seems to be a lot of the same stuff. But every so often, they change it out in here. But goes for quite a while before anyone brings stuff in like and, you know there was this one time I came in here and someone brought in all of these anchor bay titles and some some really good stuff but it's been such a long time but this place is good though for finding you know shop factory titles and you know screen factory titles in person which is pretty cool because they always have them in person and a lot of the arrow titles in person as well into Walmart we go Oh, I'm in the front looking at the Deadpool, and it looks like it's $19.99 here on Blu-ray. But I think this is the standard releasing one that everywhere has. I know there's a lot of different features on this one, though. But it doesn't look like they have an exclusive one. I'll look in the main section, though, and see if they have an exclusive one. But I don't know if they do. I don't think I heard that they did. Well, I'm over here in the main section. I only see the, you know, general release ones of Deadpool. It doesn't look like they have any exclusive editions in here. One of the other things that came out today was The Boy. And I actually really liked this movie a lot. This was actually, to me, I thought was pretty cool and pretty decent twists and stuff that was going on in this. It doesn't have any features, though. This is the only one thing that I wish that had some features. And this was today as well. It's kind of a cool futuristic movie. Synchronicity, that was not a bad one. And I think this movie was today as well. Mythica, Mythica it looks like. It's, I don't know, it looks kind of strange like in these weird robes in the back. I do not know what this one's about. And this is one of those ones, sometimes they have certain things like only Walmart has. That looks like one of those kind of ones. And I think this was today too, Against the Wild 2. I never even knew that there was a, you know, a first Against the Wild of this. I, I saw this was like on, on uh, Digital Bitch coming out. I'm like, I don't know what this one is. And I believe, I, I think this was, a, was today as well, Where to Invade Next. This was a pretty decent Michael Moore documentary. Other than that though, those are the main big releases today. Pretty much the biggest release was, you know, Deadpool. And we're over here in the section seeing if anything different. And I think it's pretty much all the stuff from last week. I think this one could have been this week. I'm not so sure. A bad hurt. That may have been this week, but a lot of stuff came out. Every time I put them back, I screw them up. But every time, um, you know, they got a lot of stuff last week. So they usually, when they get a lot of stuff, they don't change them out for a while. Because all this stuff was pretty much last week. I showed, you know, Blood Sombrero, uh, Heart Haunting at Caldor, Emily, which was pretty cool, like Babysitter movie. I thought that was a 
pretty cool creepy babysitter movie definitely worth checking out like I said too Scarred is in here as well I want to have a little part in so if you guys are interested in seeing that or you guys are to check it out let me know what you guys thought of that one but I don't think there's too much else in here I think the one other thing today was Scream you know the f complete first season of Scream and this one only has a DVD release and there's no Blu-ray release of this specific one and I believe this was today as well and I don't know what this one was if this was a TV show I think this may have been a sh or I think it was a movie for a lifetime I think that's what it was Manson's Lost Girls I didn't see this one so I don't know how that one is if any of you guys have watched that when it was on let me know how that one is but other than that I don't think there was anything else in here today into Best Buy we go and it's funny how a steelbook's like in here, the Deadpool, the steelbooks are all gone. I looked at the front, there's none at all. They're totally out. But like, you know, a Star Wars, when these came out, you know, the steelbooks were here for a long time. They had so many of them. And there's certain releases that are really, really hard to get. But you know, like I said, I got the one in Target and the red case one, but I want to show you guys that, but it doesn't seem like there's any of them to show you guys for the video. It seems like with certain of the steelbook releases, they end up, you know, super, you know, rare. It's really weird how some of them are like that. Like I said, you know, the Star Wars one, you came in here for weeks after they still had them but not with this they're all gone already other than that though I think this came out today this Lego Scooby-Doo movie like uh, Scooby-Doo and the Haunted Hollywood there was like a Scooby-Doo movie done like in the Lego style and I think this was today as well this one I don't know much about this one at all called uh, Creative Control if you guys have watched this one let me know how that one is other than that though um, Regression I think this was today as well and this was a pretty interesting movie I didn't actually love this you know the director of the other uh, the others did this one this was this was all right and then you know uh, the Michael Moore one was today as well and like I showed earlier synchronicity was today as well other than that though I think those are the main releases like I said it's too bad though that there is no you know steelbook in here to show of course you know the boy was today as well but no steelbooks and I think these were today these new like re-release ones of them with um, the, you know the covers of the faces on them you know for the jerk Liar, liar. I think there might have been a Night Professor one as well. Fletch, 40 year old virgin, knocked up, happy Gilmore. These are kind of cool, like face covers. I think it's pretty much the same. Oh, that's, and there's actually, oh yeah, the Billy Madison one. They put it behind it, you know, Billy Madison. Than, than the Happy Gilmore one. So these are kind of cool if you don't have these. Only $7.99 with these covers. It's the same features from before, but just, you know, a re-release cover, and it has in there $8 for Neighbors 2. Well, that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. You know, it sucks I couldn't find the steelbook in there to show you guys, but I, like I said, people have told me online, too, some of those steelbooks end up really limited. Other ones, you see so many copies of them. This looks like one of the really limited ones. At least it wasn't here, because it's only, I think it's about three not even three yet and they're already sold out of them they had like three different spots where it could have been but I did get the red case one which that one could end up so I don't feel like that one's gonna be as limited but I do feel like it's gonna be gone in like two weeks or so and then it's gonna be all just the blue case ones at Target anyway though guys now stay tuned for a couple new DVD blu-ray reviews and the first ones I got from 88 films or sleep by camp 2 and 3 these are the region B UK releases from you know from 88 films of sleep by camp 2 and 3 and I actually switched because they have reversible artwork for both of these and I switched to this Nightmare Vacation 2. I think I think the Sleep by Camp films were, you know, called that in the UK Nightmare Vacation. I'm not 100% certain, but it's like this alternate artwork, which is actually pretty cool. It's got like a Freddy Krueger and a Jason, you know, with Pamela Springsteen's character. And, you know, also it has the original. Uh, this is the one I always remember as a kid, you know, when this used to be on the VHS release. This one with, you know, the, it's not Pamela Springsteen, some other person with the, uh, you know, Freddy glove and the Jason mask and then like the Leatherface chainsaw, which is kind of a cool uh, cover for that. Like I said, I, it's always kind of interesting when they have like these artworks for these movies like this, when it's not the, you know, original person who's even in the movie. And there's a lot of things like that in the 80s when they released things like that, when it was like, had nothing to do with it. But if you guys haven't seen the Slave Camp, you know, films, you know, the sequels, they basically have Pamela Springsteen coming in, taking over Felissa Rose, they wanted something that was a bit older version of her and it's basically the second one is her going to uh, a summer camp 
and kind of going there as a counselor and basically going and killing off the the uh, counselors at the camp one by one and like these crazy deaths and stuff like that. And she does this great song there too. She cause kind of plays this kind of prudish type character and she's singing that one song like, I'm a happy camper when I camp until I die. Something like that. It was this really great song, but a really cool release and also has in here a, um, you know, interview with the director, Michael A. Simpson, you know, talking about the movie in here. You know, his movies too. I always like his stuff and there's a lot of them too I hope get a blu release like he did one called Funland which is a really cool weird movie maybe 88 films will put that one out it's like a really really cool movie and would love to see a blu-ray of that one and it's one of those ones too like the DVD is like a really bad picture like VHS quality so it'd be cool to actually see it in a good release and also like I said Sleepaway Camp 3 you know Teenage Wasteland this has on here um you know, uh, deleted scenes on here, an interview as well, and, you know, reversible artwork as well for the movie. And this one is basically Pamela Springsteen's character, go, you know, Angela, going to this juvenile detention kind of camp for these bad kids. They've kind of put there to kind of rehabilitate them and make them work together out in the woods. And she goes there and kills one of the girls in the beginning of the movie and takes her place there, goes out into the woods there with them and starts killing them off one by one. There's like a great lawnmower death in this movie. Really fun movies. These are some of my favorite, like, 80s slasher movies. And the next one from 88 Films as well, and this is from the Italian collection. This is a Region B release as well. Uh, and this is Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals. And um, I have not watched this movie in years. This is, you know, from the Black Emmanuel series. I had all of them for, like before I moved, and a lot of them I don't have anymore, which is a shame because like a lot of them are out of print and really hard to get certain certain of the Emmanuel films. I have some of them still, but I don't think there's too many of them out on Blu-ray. I think this is one of the only ones and in the U.S. I don't know for sure if there's any release on Blu-ray or not, but this one is, you know, like I said, Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals, and this was kind of like a cannibal holocaust kind of thing. It it takes a long time for the cannibals to come into this movie. It's not as much like cannibals as you would think it is. It's more like kind of drawn out sequences of like, because, you know, the Emmanuel films are kind of erotic kind of films and like some of slightly unfitting kind of stuff going on slightly to like what the movie really is. But it's basically Emmanuel's character is always goes around and she's a reporter and she's heard about these like this real tribe of cannibals, this woman that escaped from them and she's in like the nut house in the beginning of the movie. So she ends up wanting to go there and try and track down these cannibals and it's her with a group of this team going out there to try and find them. I actually really like this movie. It's not a perfect movie though it's got a lot of flaws with certain things in it it doesn't work totally there's some stuff too like you can tell Eli Roth definitely likes some of the stuff in this for Green Inferno it's like some of the stuff at the end a little bit has that kind of feel to it but I actually like this movie a lot like I said but not a perfect movie not the best of the Emmanuel films the next one is the UK release as well. This is a Region 2 release. The Blu-ray of this is like totally sold out, but this is uh, Sleep Break, I mean, Creep Show 2. And this one has on here, um, you know, some new features on here. Screenplay uh, for a sequel, an interview with George A. Romero, Tales from the Creep interview with Tom Savini, behind-the-scenes footage with Tom Savini, The Creep, and then has also, you know, reversible artwork as well. And But, you know, this is from the uh, Creep Show series, the anthology films. I really love this one. I think this movie, too has one of the best anthology segments of all time, in my opinion, one of my at least all-time favorites with the raft. The raft segment, the kids that swim out to the raft, and there's this kind of like tar kind of monster that's like, if it touches them, it eats their skin and like, like dissolves them like acid. I feel like that is one of the coolest uh, sequences of like, in, like anthology kind of history. At least to me, I really love that segment. It's one of those things too, I really feel like they could expand it into a full movie one day. Like, it, like I'm surprised that no one else has kind of ripped it off because it's a kind of a cool concept. But like I said though, this is a Region uh, 2 release for this one. The next one, a friend of mine directed this, Victor Bonacore, and he was he asked me if I wanted to check it out. And I, you know, I had seen um, uh, this is you know a, a documentary on Jim Van Vieber, who's a like underground cult filmmaker, and he did like the Manson. I can't remember the Manson family, the Manson family, and then Deadbeat at Dawn. So I remember seeing Manson family. I don't know if I ever saw Deadbeat at Dawn. This is called Diary of a Deadbeat, and this is from uh, Massacre Video. This is the Blu-ray release, and it's basically a documentary talking, you know, about uh, Jim Van Vieber's life and kind of 
kind of the problems that he's had with getting films because he made these two big films and it talks about his early days uh, doing short films and kind of how he would he led up to doing the two features that he did and kind of with his comeback as well talking to fans going to Cinema Wasteland the horror convention uh, kind of and all the kind of issues he's had with movies that kind of almost came to be and then it didn't end up happening so it's kind of sad some of the things that happened because like there's this one Al Capone movie that he was going to do and then the funding went through and then he you know was trying to raise money for his new film and hopefully the new film ends up becoming a full feature because he, he raised money on Kickstarter to make this movie but it's kind of just about his life and showing a lot of you know really cool footages of like the shorts that he did as a kid and you know leading up to the two features that he did and talking about you know the indie films that he's acted in as well and kind of like you know like I said talking with the fans that going to the conventions just sort of talking all about his life and just sort of the the problems that have happened and how he used to live in LA and he's moved to Florida and just kind of trying to you know do a new film and you know and if it's going to happen and hopefully it does but it was actually like I said I actually really really like this movie I like these documentaries about filmmakers and kind of about these kind of stories where you're kind of rooting for the guy and like that's really the way it came across to me is you're kind of really rooting for him to be successful with this and it kind of has that American movie kind of vibe a little bit you know about a filmmaker and I always like those kind of documentaries but has on here a bunch of features on here interview with the director a number of extended interviews uh, and other things as well on this. The next one from um, Mac Mondo Macabro, and this is a movie, you know, the cover makes it look like it's a newer movie, but it's actually a, an older film from the 70s. I think it was like 70. Three, I said no, seventy four. This is a movie called Symptoms. It was a pretty interesting movie. It's one of those ones too when you're watching, you're trying to figure out exactly what the movie's about. Uh, the one actress in this was in, I think, that movie. The God Send or something. I knew I'd recognize her from something. I think that was what she was from. Um, the movie, though, is basically about this this girl who ends up inviting her friend to come out with her to the, her house out in the, kind of the middle of nowhere. And it's kind of like she's saying, like, all the things will be figured out soon. And soon you understand everything. And it's kind of... And then, then there's, like, this weird, like, groundskeeper guy who lives there, you know, on the property. And she's like, oh, I don't like that guy. I hate that guy. He's always staring at me. It's one of those movies when you're trying to figure out exactly what is going on and, like, what everything means and stuff like that. It's got a creepy atmosphere and some pretty cool music in it. But it's a creepy kind of... Like, kind of has that gothic feel. But it really isn't a gothic film, but has that sort of feel to sort of, like, those Gene Rowland kind of films as well, like a little bit of that kind of feel to them. But like I said, this is Symptoms and has on here a brand new HD transfer in the film, uh, documentaries on the movie, and then some interviews as well with the cast. And, and um, you yeah, know, no, interviews with uh, yeah, one of the actresses, uh, two of the actresses, and then one of the editor on the movie. The next one's these ones are both from, um, I believe, from Brain Damage and Midnight Release. And the first one is Evil Souls. And this one, movie, this is kind of an interesting movie. It's like kind of about this guy. One of those movies you're trying to figure out exactly what, what it was about. But you see this like weird guy. He like kidnaps this woman. And it also deals with like these paranormal aspects as well. Because like this woman's like possessed and getting pulled off the bed. And it's basically, though, in the beginning of the movie, something ends up happening. And the characters kind of come back together again. But this guy ends up kidnapping this one woman and chaining her up in this weird room kidnaps this other woman, chains her to the room. You're trying to figure out exactly what's going on. There's like this priest character who's like trying to talk to somebody they used to know and trying to track down the, the killer. It was, it was kind of weird. Like I said, I couldn't really follow it too much exactly what was going on with some of it. It was kind of interesting. As on here, deleted scenes, outtakes, and cast and crew interviews. Um, kind of cool stuff but like not like I said I couldn't really follow it too well and the last one this was like an Italian movie because it was dubbed over and it was I, I'm pretty, pretty sure it was Arachnicide because um, I'm pretty sure it really had that I'm pretty certain it was dubbed unless it was like dubbed like like you know like an Italian style it was like filmed and like there was no dialogue recorded and they did it like the old school way like, I don't know but it's called Arachnicide and it's kind of about this company that's like developed this stuff for growing food and way of like making it so it can grow much bigger and grow very fast and stuff like that. And of course, though, something goes wrong with that and ends up making these gigantic spiders that are out. And it's like the army trying to steal this formula away and take it down. And of course, they get out there with these giant spiders that are out there and they're all getting like attacked by them and kind of trying to you know, you know, get their mission solved and stuff like that. This was okay. It had some really, really strange effects in it. It was one of those movies, you know, and it doesn't have a huge amount of budget, so they like doing like these CG effects, and it's kind of like, 
I don't know, like some of them were weird. They even did some stuff with CGI of like the soldiers walking in. It was kind of odd. I mean, it really was like seeing these CGI soldiers walking in the scene. I'm like, why are they doing it like that? I don't know. It was okay. Kind of killer spider kind of movie. Anyway, though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.